when a breakout in the market occurs and the market moves in the direction of the break. Commonly, you'll see the market returns to the point of the breakout, then proceed to go in the direction of the breakout. Trading the retest of a breakout point is not a new strategy and is quite a popular method in the trading community. But I bet you are trading retests in the wrong way, because the rules provided to you by most trading books and websites are not aligned with how the smart money operate in the financial markets. Today I'll show you how to trade retests of breakouts properly. We'll begin by looking at the actual reason why a retest occurs after a breakout. I'll show you how to trade retests using price action, and I'll reveal to you the secret ingredient in order to trade the retests effectively. So if you could, like, subscribe to the channel, and stick around for the full video. A retest at a breakout level means the market breaks a high or a low, returns to the breakout point, and moves back in the direction of which the breakout occurred. This market action is down to the smart money needing to fill more buy or sell orders in the market before the market breaks out from a high or a low. There are many breakout traders that have pending orders placed at the levels, ready to profit from the breakout. When the breakout finally comes, their orders are filled. Breakout traders spend a little time in profit on their trades, as typically the market will continue in the direction of the break for a small amount of time. The turning point comes when smart money begins to take profits off their own trades, because, very important, they entered early, way before we, retail traders, saw the actual breakout. This profit-taking is what will cause the market to move back to the breakout point the retest. If you are the breakout trader, you will watch your profits steadily decrease as the market gets closer and closer to the breakout point where you had your trade placed. So seeing your profit get smaller and smaller, you will most likely get scared of potentially coming out of the trade with no profit at all. So you will close your trade while there is still a small amount of profit left. Different traders will decide to close their trades at different times. The closer the market gets to the breakout point, the higher the number of breakout traders will be closing their trades. And when the breakout traders close their trades, opposite orders will be put into the market, which the smart money will use to get more buy or sell positions placed in the market. Start thinking at retests as the market's way of resetting itself or flushing out the weak positions. The term weak position refers to any group of traders, usually retail, who are not comfortable holding a position through the increased volatility for the opportunity to make larger gains. These are usually the traders who are very risk averse and therefore get stopped out prematurely before a larger move ever gets going. Of course, there are also those who trade the lower timeframes and therefore aren't looking for the larger opportunity. These traders are happy to take their profits early and often. This area on the chart is the point where breakout traders will have pending orders to sell placed in anticipation of the market breaking out. You can see how the market continues to advance lower after the breakout has took place smart money begins their profit taking after the breakout occurs and the market begins to rise back to the breakout point causing a retest now beside breakout traders there are also reactive traders in the market who would have placed sell trades after the candle which caused the breakout these traders will also add a significant number of orders in the market which the banks will use to fill more orders when their profit-taking pushes the market higher. Most traders, when looking to trade a retest, will mark the point where a breakout has occurred using horizontal lines. And this is one of the reasons why you fail at trading retests. A far better way of marking the points is using areas. By marking the breakout point as an area instead of a line, you give yourself the benefit of not having to guess the breakout point. 
If there are several highs, for example, and you mark the level using a line, then you won't be able to know which highs the market is going to return to. By having a zone, you can cover multiple highs and include them in your total risk when trading the retest. In this example, you can see there are two highs which breakout traders could have used to enter long trades. In real time, you wouldn't know which one of these highs the market is going to retest. If you mark an area including both highs, then you are able to remove some discretion from your decision-making process and also give yourself a point where you know the trade is likely to be wrong. When trading retests of breakout, it all comes down to judgment, experience and the market or the instrument, because very important, each will have its own unique price behavior and risk profile. Also, there needs to be a clearly visible gap in terms of the closing price of the candle, which finally breaches the support or resistance level. This is the first signal that a breakout is in progress. The second is, of course, volume. As we can see in this example, the initial move higher up and through the resistance level has to be followed by strong and rising volume. It takes effort for the market to move away. The same applies here. And you should see this move reflected in the associated volume of the next few bars. If you don't see this, then you know it's either a trap set by the smart money or there is simply no interest from market participants to take the market higher at this stage. If it's a valid move, then the volumes on the initial break will be well above average and rising. At this stage, you want to see the market pull back to test the former resistance level. But very important, this should be followed with low or decreasing volume, since we are now developing a bullish trend higher and expect to see a rising market with rising volume. So very important, you want to see strong and rising volume on the breakout and low volume on the pullback. Then, at the retest level, you want to see another increase in volume. Exactly the same principles apply when the breakout is into a bearish move. Once again, it makes no difference whether this is a continuation of a bearish trend or a reversal from bullish to bearish. The only difference is that this time we are breaking through the support of price congestion. As before, this breakout should be clean and well developed and followed by a well above average volume to reflect the effort required to break away. Again, we want to see the market move back higher to test the previous support area, but this should happen on low volume. And as the market pulls away, rising volume should reflect the new downwards move. Remember, falling markets should also see rising volume, reflecting a genuine move lower. It isn't enough to simply see the market touch a broken level as a new support or resistance. And if you think about it, that doesn't actually qualify as a retest. When the market revisits a level after breaking it, we want to see some sort of confirmation that the previous support level turned into resistance and vice versa. A previous resistance level turned into support. My preferred method to enter into trades at the retest of a breakout level is by using price action more specifically, using candlestick patterns, such as engulfing candles or pin bars. I trade on higher timeframes, mostly on hourly, 4-hour and the daily charts. When I see a market breaking a support, I like to watch the breakout on a lower time frame to see if there are any candlestick patterns I can use as an entry into the trade. Here we have the breakout area. Here we can see when the market reached the area, a bearish engulfing candle formed. Volume confirmed the move, high volume on the breakout, and low volume during the pullback. 
seeing the engulfing candle at the retest with volume confirmation. You could have entered into a short trade with your stop above the high of the breakout zone. Now, you could also decide to put your stop above the high of the engulfing bar. But be careful, if you use the signal candle to place your stops, you'll tend to find you'll unnecessarily lose money because if the market breaks the high of the engulfing bar and you take the loss and then the market moves deeper into the zone before reversing again, then you have basically taken a loss which could have been avoided if you would just put your stop at the high of the zone in the first place. The pin bar is one of the most powerful and reliable price action trading signals during retests and the signal I rely the most in my trading. A pin bar is a price action pattern which signals that a reversal may be about to take place in the price action. Trading pin bar signals with support and resistance and volume confirmation is perhaps one of the most effective ways to trade. The very best pin bars stick out at the retest level. The bigger the rejection and the bigger the pin bar, the more powerful the signal. A high probability pin bar at the retest level needs to have the wick sticking out from all other candles and above average volume to confirm an active participation in the retest. Whether you are trading a key horizontal level, a wedge pattern or a channel, it's important to always wait for a retest of the broken level. This involves waiting for the retest, analyzing the volume during the breakout and during the pullback period, as well as confirming price action before putting any capital at risk. You will be tempted to enter right after the breakout, and many times you won't get the chance of a retest. And you have to accept that you will miss many moves by being somewhat conservative. But remember, by waiting for a retest, you are essentially waiting for any weak positions to exit the market before placing a position. This is a stronger foundation from which you buy or sell, which leads to a higher probability of a successful outcome. One of my own rules is that the first retest is the most important one. What I mean is that if you have a zone marked on your charts, and you see the market return to the breakout zone and proceed to move back in the direction of the breakout, I consider this first retest as having the highest probability of succeeding. One of the primary concepts of order flow analysis is the idea that when a technical level has been hit once, its significance in the market decreases dramatically and the chances of the market reacting to the level in the same way again is low. You may not agree with this, but here's how I view the situation. In a breakout retest scenario, if the price returns to the breakout zone once again after already being touched, the breakout traders who went long on the breakout will not be in their trades anymore. So a second reaction at the breakout level has a lower chance of succeeding. Less stops are being hunted, less orders are being put on the market. You can see here the breakout area, which turns the market on the first retest. But on the second touch, the market breaks the area easily and returns to a lower technical level.
if you found value and learned something new. Leave us a like. This way we'll know if you'd like to see more videos like this one. And check out our academy program if you want to further level up your trading. Until next time.